So in this next Photoshop tutorial on my design class, what we're going to be doing is taking a look at how to use the clone stamp tool to duplicate different parts of our image to achieve different results. So just before we begin this video, do consider checking out some of the playlists that we have on the channel. Most of them are dedicated to Photoshop tutorials, but also let me know in the comments below if you'd be interested in me doing tutorials for other software, including Premiere Pro, After Effects, or even Illustrator. Great, so let's jump into this video and have a look at how we can use the clone stamp tool. So essentially what I have here is I have a very simple image with a rather plain background, which is just some concrete. And then we've also got a foreground element, which is a leaf that is lying on the concrete. So when it comes to the clone stamp tool, what it effectively allows us to do is duplicate different parts of our image and use a brush tool and paste it elsewhere on our canvas. And this is very handy when it comes to manipulating photos in Photoshop. For example, there might be cases where I want to duplicate this leaf and have a whole variety of different leaves throughout the entire canvas. So the clone stamp tool would be one tool that allows me to achieve this by duplicating this leaf. But vice versa, there might also be cases where actually I want to get rid of the leaf in my image. And there might be cases where I want to use the clone stamp tool to duplicate parts of the background in order to cover over the leaf so that we don't see it. So we'll be going through both scenarios with the clone stamp tool and I'll also be sharing some of the shortcuts that allow us to use the clone stamp tool very effectively and very quickly. So first of all, let's actually locate the clone stamp tool within Photoshop. So hopefully your Photoshop is looking very similar to this and the clone stamp tool can be found almost halfway along the left hand toolbar. And as that graphic clearly indicates, the shortcut to the clone stamp tool is S. So anytime you press S on your keyboard, and this is both for Windows and Mac, it automatically takes you to the clone stamp tool. Now, if I quickly just hold on this, yours might accidentally be set to the pattern stamp tool. So if this is the case, so all you have to do is use your left mouse key and hold on this clone stamp tool. And once again, it shows us the shortcut on the right hand side here. Anytime you see this on any of the other tools, this is the shortcut to this tool. So I'm just gonna make sure I have the clone stamp tool selected. As you can see, the other one has a slight difference in the icon. So this one is the one that we want. And as you can see, this is automatically taking us to a brush. Now, hopefully you know some of the fundamentals of the brush tool by now. I am going to be using a shortcut throughout this video in order to manipulate my brush. And if you want to check out how to use that shortcut, then I'd highly encourage you to watch the video that I made on it. And I'll make sure I leave a link to that in the description below. So as you can see, my brush is actually showing a preview of what I'm going to be duplicating, but yours probably won't be at the moment. And that's completely fine. Now, the first thing I want to do to ensure that I don't actually affect the background image is I'm actually going to go and create a new layer by pressing it on this small square with a plus in the middle. And as you can see, we've got a new layer. So now that I've got my new layer selected, I'm actually going to be showing you the incorrect way of doing this first. As you can see, I can no longer see a preview and I'll tell you why that is in just one minute. So to use the clone stamp tool, what we essentially have to do is first locate which part of the image we actually want to duplicate. So for example, let's say I want to duplicate this leaf and paste it up here in the right hand corner. Well, what I have to do is hold option or alt if you're on windows on my keyboard. And as you can see, your cursor changes to this new selector. And all I have to do is press once on my left mouse key to select the middle of our leaf. And then I can let go of option. But as you can see at the moment, nothing actually appears in our preview. The cursor has now changed to a circle, which represents our normal brush, but nothing is appearing in the middle of the circle and giving us a preview of the area that we're going to be duplicating. And if I were to actually draw this new area out, so just holding left mouse key, just like a normal brush, as you can see, nothing is happening. One thing to bear in mind is if you look back to where we selected the initial part of the image that we wanted to duplicate, there is actually a new cross that looks like a plus symbol that has appeared right over that area. And this gives us an indication of which area we're actually duplicating. So you might've guessed what the issue is. And the issue is of course that we're on a new layer and not the correct layer that we want to duplicate. So as you can see, if we go to the parameters at the top of our screen, these parameters appear for all of the different tools that we have in Photoshop and allow you to customize your tool in order to get the correct results. As you can see, the sample that it's currently taking is the current layer, but our current layer, which is layer one, actually has nothing within it. 
So what we have to do is change what we're actually sampling. So I can select current and below, and this would mean that it would take everything into account within our current layer and every layer that is positioned underneath our layer in the hierarchy, which would be fine at the moment. But say, for example, if you had a layer on top of your current layer, which you also wanted to include, then you need to make sure you choose all layers. So I'm just going to do current and below because I have nothing on top. So I'll just use this. And as you can see, now we're getting a preview. But once again, to make sure that I am duplicating the correct part of our layer, I'm just going to hold option once again and select the same part again. And now I can start drawing wherever I want to duplicate this new leaf. So I can just hold my left mouse key, just like a normal brush, and start drawing out this leaf. Like so. And as you can see, just like that, we have a duplicate of our leaf. Now, one or two things to bear in mind, and this will become more apparent when we do the other example where I duplicate the background. As you can see, the color of the background or even the luminosity of the background is different in this area to where we originally duplicated it. So in this bottom left hand corner, the background is slightly darker as opposed to this lighter corner in the top right hand corner. So as you can see, the leaf now has a very strong dark outline. Now, this might be what you're looking for, in which case, great. But I think I'd actually prefer it with a slightly lighter background because that's what I'm looking to achieve with this result. So there are a few ways in which you can change this. First of all, if I reselect our leaf, I can reduce the size of our brush and then try to be more precise around the edges and try to only include a slight amount of shadows to our image. But as you can see, this is mainly guesswork because I'm not actually sure where the boundaries of our leaf are. So if I just quickly undo that by pressing Command and Z on my keyboard or Control and Z if you're on Windows. Well, one other way you can do this, which is a slightly less destructive process, I can actually create a layer mask on my layer one just by going to the bottom here where there's a small white rectangle with a black dot in the middle. And as you can see, this has now created a mask on my layer one. I can then go to the brush tool, which is just above our clone stand tool. And as you can see, the shortcut to it is B for both Windows and Mac. And making sure that I have black selected as my primary color and that I'm on the correct layer mask. So pressing on the layer mask thumbnail and making sure that the thumbnail for the layer one is not selected. I can now actually start to hide and paint over parts of those darker areas of the image in an attempt to make it blend better with the original background. And as you can see, that already looks slightly better. It might not be as perfect as the option that we have below, but at least there is less difference between the lighter and darker areas in the background. Now, obviously we have got rid of some of the shadows that we have for our leaf. So you might want to make sure that you create a new layer just underneath your leaf. Go to the brush tool, make sure that black is selected, maybe increase the size of the brush slightly and reduce the hardness and actually start to paint over slightly just to get some of that shadow back. And then changing that layers blending mode from normal to soft light. And as you can see, that already starts to improve the look. And then I encourage you just to keep adding more in order to add the shadow and just to try and get it as realistic with this as possible. And then it becomes a process of trying to make sure that this blends in correctly with the background. And then I might just reduce the opacity slightly to help it blend in slightly more naturally. And although that might not be the perfect look for our leaf, it gives you some indication of the steps you can take to try and make sure that it also fits in with this part of the image. So the second use of the clone stamp tool is actually to use the background to hide parts of our foreground image. So to do this, what we have to do is follow the exact same process. I will create a new layer to make sure that we don't actually affect the background layer. And I'll just make sure that's placed on top of all of the other layers. So once again, I can go to the clone stamp tool with the shortcut that we now know, which is S. And just before I do anything else, I'm going to quickly increase the size of my brush and reduce the hardness to 0%. Great. So the one rule that I have when I'm using the clone stamp tool to duplicate backgrounds is I always try to use the background closest to the subject that I'm trying to remove. So in other words, I'd be trying to duplicate this area closest to the subject. 
because this is going to give me the best lighting options for this area. Just like the issue that we had with this leaf when we were duplicating it and parts of the background look different with luminosity, if we use areas closest to the subject that we're removing, the lighting is more likely to be more similar. So for example, I can probably reduce the slice ever so slightly of my brush, hold Option or Alt once again on my keyboard to make a selection of the background, making sure that my sample is current and below and that my new layer is above the layer that I'm trying to duplicate. And then you're slowly using the tool to fill in this part of the image. So once I've done a small section like this, as you can see, the lighting in this area would probably, if we were trying to think realistically, be rather similar to this and a blend of also some of this. Then in order to keep this area of the image as consistent with the lighting as possible, I'd probably wouldn't continue with the selection that I've made here, but instead make a new selection in this area by once again holding Option or Alt and then duplicating this part of the image, hoping that the blending will work slightly better. And as you can see, there's already a slight gradient that's appearing. If I just quickly go to the move tool, there's already a slight gradient that's appearing between these two areas, where in this section, we're having a slightly darker background, have a strong boundary with a slightly lighter background. So although this is small at the moment, this is something that I don't want to make sure continues for the rest of the image. So if I go back to the clones down tool, make a new selection, I'll probably try and just try and cover that section over. And obviously going around the entire image, obviously trying to avoid the shadow because that wouldn't naturally occur if there's no subject. Now, one thing to bear in mind is, as you can see, there is a difference occurring here where we have a slightly darker area of our image and a slightly lighter area of our image. But as you can see, the difference is also occurring here. And this has already got a slightly more natural blend between the two. So if I actually duplicate areas of this part of the image, so you're going back to the clone stamp tool option and covering over this section. As you can see, this automatically gets rid of that boundary that we'd created. Now, one other thing to bear in mind is the sharpness of the image. So as you can see, this section of the image is very sharp, but this is slightly more blurred. And this is occurring because the hardness of our brush isn't set to 100%. So if I go back to the clone stamp tool, as you can see, the hardness at the moment is set to 0%. If I make that slightly less, like say 33%, and now hold option, copy that part of the image and duplicate. Then as you can see, we're not creating these darker areas of the image, but now the contrast between the two boundaries can be harsher. So it's just a case of trying to find the right setting that creates the most realistic result. So I'll just quickly go ahead and fill in the rest of this selection. Now, as you can see, I'm not actually spending a whole lot of time making sure that I'm very accurate. There are some areas that if I was spending longer on this, I'd make sure to get rid of these slight areas around the edges, which don't look very natural. But just as an example, this is how it works when you're duplicating a background. Now, the reason I chose a background that does have so many different textures and lighting cases is because I wanted to show you how this works. If you're using a background that's much more simple, perhaps it doesn't have all of these small dots all over the place then obviously this issue won't occur as much. But I thought it would be important to highlight that this does occur and it's something you have to watch out for because you want it to be as natural looking as possible. But the great thing is, of course, that we're using a separate layer, so we can always toggle this layer on and off to compare and contrast with the original to see if we're slightly in the right direction. And this actually shows you a good example because if you look at how detailed this section of the image is and then when we duplicate it, you can see that these areas are slightly faded out and that's something that you want to address. You can do this by using another layer mask like we did before and perhaps just going through with the brush tool and trying to get rid of some of these areas and then maybe reduplicating areas. So just going back to the constant tool just to hide parts of the image again if you accidentally undo that. So just before we finish, I also wanted to share some of the shortcuts that are available for the clone stamp tool. So if I just quickly hide all of these layers that we've been using, go back to the original image and just create a new layer that we can work with. And just quickly go to the clone stamp tool once again and increase the slice slightly. I'm actually going to make it a very large selection so that you can see exactly what's going on with these shortcuts. So if I select this part of the image, as you can see, we're getting a preview of what we're going to be copying, but there are actually one or two shortcuts that allow you to change the placement of what you are duplicating. 
And this is slightly hard to explain, so I'm just going to focus on showing you instead because I think that will be more helpful. So if you hold Option and Shift on your keyboard or Alt and Shift for Windows, as you can see, the cursor has already changed. It's got a small circle in the bottom right hand corner with a cross going through it. And then you can basically use the two arrows that are pointing left and right on your keyboard to change the rotation of your duplication. So for me, these arrows are placed just to the right of the M letter on our keyboard. And if I hold the one going left, as you can see, the duplication is now going to be rotating in a anti-clockwise direction. And you have to make sure that you hold these keys in in order to keep rotating the image. And if I let go and hold the left mouse key on my mouse, as you can see, the duplication will now appear at a angle. And vice versa, if I just quickly undo that by pressing Command and Z or Control and Z for Windows, I can actually change the rotation of our duplication in the other direction. So in a clockwise direction, just by holding Option and Shift once again, or Alt and Shift and holding on the right arrow. And as you can see, it's now going to be rotating in the other direction which is very handy if we wanted to quickly manipulate the angle of our duplication. Now, similarly, we can also do this for the scale of our duplication. So if I also hold Option and Shift in once again, but this time go to the square brackets that we have on our keyboard. So if you go to the left square bracket, as you can see, it's going to make our selection much, much smaller. And I can keep doing this until I am happy with the scale of our duplication. And then once again, hold the left mouse key to duplicate it to this size. Now, if I quickly undo that with Command Z once again and do it in the opposite direction. So once again, Option, Alt, and then the right squared bracket. Then as you can see, this time it's going to enlarge our duplication. And then once again, I can hold the left mouse key to actually make this duplication. So these are just two very handy shortcuts that allow us to duplicate this material in different ways. Great. So those were all the fundamentals of how to use the clone stamp tool in Photoshop. Do remember to leave a like on this video if you found this helpful and also remember to subscribe to the channel to make sure that you never miss a Photoshop tutorial. Also, let me know in the comments below if you have any other questions for the clone stamp tool and I'll try to answer as many as possible.